talk about the things that builds to who you are. The things that I feel is very important <laughs> that builds your identity. I already said one earlier, is one of them is ambition. But an ambitious person has a zeal to push. An ambitious person has the momentum going for them. An ambitious person is willing to go through the challenges but still maintaining positive attitude. Ambition is a very important part of your identity and that's why in my story I made sure I said everything that shows the ambitious side of me. A sales team, when you're ambitious, there's a lot you can do. But of course be ambitious but also be a person of character. Yeah? That also brings to the next thing. That a salesperson must be a person with what? Character. And this character could be integrity. It could be honesty. Yeah? It could be what? Huh? Transparency. That it's so important that you are a person of good character. You are a person of integrity. But also the thing that builds your identity is good communication skills. That you need to learn to communicate well with people. Now, good communication skills is, is broad. But it plays a huge role in your sales life. That, that you need to express yourself well. Because sales is basically communication. Is communication with somebody else. If you do not communicate and express yourself well, there's going to be a problem. You agree, right? Yes. I'm not going to trust you. <laughs> what builds trust is the power of the tongue. But some of us, when we even this morning, we're introducing ourselves, but we are not eloquent enough with our own names, and that's already a problem. I entered. Uh, there's a company called Electrolytes. Um, Yesterday I had a training there. It was a, it was a pro bono training. They just said, "You first come and show us what you can do, and then um, we will see if we can give you a job." So everybody it's, it's seated, and I stayed in the car. And then I woke up when everybody was seated, and I said, "Good afternoon, everybody." And it was, eh? this guy? I mean, I, I dominated the room. And, and, and this is an aspect of good communication as well. As salespeople, there must be such level of enthusiasm that comes out of your voice. And that also matters of identity, that you have to be enthusiastic. En enthusiasm is a very important quality of a salesperson. But when you are so mean looking, like some bad guy in a movie, <laughs> then you're not going to <coughs> attract me. You are not going to influence me. I'm not going to enjoy your company. And if I cannot enjoy your company, oftentimes I don't want to hear much about what you're saying. So you need to be enthusiastic. You have to communicate well. You have to express yourself. You need to know how to greet well, how to build rapport. That's all aspect of good communication. But you need to be enthusiastic. But again, you also need to be smart. The smartness is important in the this, in this sales life career. And smartness is issues that cannot be taught in school. Smartness is a matter of identity. I told you I used to go to a window, I had the money to buy things, but I was still buying the wrong ones. Because <laughs> also it has a lot to do with the exposure. You need to choose. If, if you're not good at buying the things that make you look smart and look good and feel smart, then have somebody who knows a bit about it to help you and you know, make some patches. Because the truth is, in one of my chapters in the book I wrote, probably all of you will get a copy of this book. I'll, I'll, I'm very happy that uh, Head of Sales is here and L&D is here. They'll buy these books for you. In one of the chapters in Become a Sales Superstar and Dominate Your Market, I wrote and I said, I buy you first before I buy what you have to sell. Okay? I buy you first before I buy what you have to sell. So help me to like you. Help me to pass a good judgment on you. The, the, the truth is, 
we are always passing judgment. When I walk in here, all of you who looked at me, you judge me. But you know the funny thing about judgment? You will not tell me that you judge me in any way. Your answer is where? Here and here. You have not told it to me. And that's the same with the strangers you meet out there. So help me to pass a good judgment on you. The way you dressed, the grooming you've done, the hairstyle you've cut. If you're having a watch, guys, the watch should work. I'm not, not the one that doesn't even work. You bought a very cheap watch, the one doesn't even work. What's the problem? You put him on ties of them days of the 1980s. You put him on shirts that here is, is full of sweat and dirty sweat for that matter. And for the ladies, you put the lips gloss and you dodge some part of the lips and put it on the skin. You have a hairstyle and the growth is all over the place and dead skin is white all over the place. What is going on? You're just showing how broke you are and then you're selling bank services. You're selling money, but you're not even looking 10,000 shillings. <laughs> so you have to give a good representation of you because smartness plays a huge role in as far as your identity is concerned. But again, also a matter of identity is something called knowledge. You need to be knowledgeable. All of you will have an opportunity to learn. But some will learn a lot and know so much, but many of you will also be the laggards, mediocres. Now, the opportunity to learn, everybody has, but the choice to actually learn and be very good at what you do, that is a personal choice each one of you has to make. But the truth is, knowledge is a matter of an identity. When you start speaking, and then you're inspiring ideas, and somebody said, ooh, this person knows what they're talking about. They're asking you questions, and you have solid answers that really, really connects with them. Knowledgeability is a matter of identity. It defines who you are. When you came for the interview, they asked you some solid questions. You impress Emma. You impress probably the rest of the team on the, on the panel, and that's why you're here. You have earned your right to be here, and for that you can stand for it. But now that you've got that first phase out of the way, now learn as much as possible. This is one of the learning we're doing, but this is not enough. I read four books a month. Four books a month. Two of those books are sales books. I wake up every day at 3.30, every day for the last four years. And I read for two hours, and then I prepare to go to work. At 6 a.m. every day I'm at work, and I go back home at 10. But I make sure I read 51 pages every day. That's my average for reading. For whatsoever book I'm reading, every day I'll read 51 pages. 51. So that means if a book is 200 pages, I'll finish in a maximum four days. But you should also find out your average. Start by reading three pages, four pages. And then improve on it. But the thing is, knowledge acquisition is a very substantial part of anything. You want to progress in any of your career, be so good at the knowledge that makes you good in that field. Acquire as much knowledge as possible. I invest 250000 every month on just books. 250 on books. I'm not reading because I want to be a professor. No, I'm done. I'm not going to go back to be a professor. My MBA is enough. But the thing is, I'm reading to be the best version of Daniel Children. I'm reading so I can be ready if you ask a question, anything about sales, I have some idea of how I can be able to help you. But I'm not only reading about sales, I'm reading about leadership as well. I'm reading about uh, good communications as well. I'm reading about good parenting. I'm reading a lot of content. I'm reading spirituality. You, you have to be informed. You just have to be informed. We don't even know current affairs. As sales people, we must be current. <coughs> My sister, what's your name? Layla. Layla. Layla, what's the name of the, the, the current MP of Arua Municipality? Uh, <laughs> 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 ah. 
Okay. How about Shima? Shima municipality. How about Bugiri? I'm just asking you about current affairs. These are things that happened just recently. How about Ginger municipality? No idea. No idea. Okay. What's the name of the minister in charge of investments? These are current affairs. You must be current. You must be current. You must be current. Know the current affairs of your country. Know the who in, is who in the market. What, what's the name of the owner of Sky Hotel again? It's um, Mr. Mitaturo. Mm. Okay, you know that one. It's <laughs> like <laughs> going. Yeah, they have to know. Because those are the places they go for, for lunch. <laughs> you have to be current, ladies and gentlemen. And the problem with us young people, we are current about things that doesn't matter. I'll ask this guy who will tell me every player of Manchester United. <laughs> You will know even where they stay and where they come from. <laughs> you, you, you have to be current, you have to be knowledgeable. You have to know the who is who. In, in the SME world, downtown, the guys are gonna, you're going to give good loans to, maybe revolving loan or maybe uh, an asset finance loan. Or, and you know, we are one of the best in mortgage financing and all this kind of thing. No, exactly. Who is running this town? But your knowledge level is just the knowledge level of social media, of, of, of things that doesn't even matter. So this is the beginning of your learning. But I'm, I'm challenging all of you, read. For example, which book are you reading right now for your person? The truth that should be So you wrote. Hmm? So By who? Is it a novel or is it a self novel? It's a Christian book. Yeah. Okay, okay, really? The truth, nothing but the truth. So we will ask for the scene. you are so appealing to the potential customer. That's the truth. You become so appealing. You become so likable. You become so... Uh, there's energy around you that is just so influencing. So I need you to learn. Invest some time in your personal development. I'm going to talk about that more in the slides. But it's part of an identity thing. Things to do with perseverance. Nobody's going to teach you to be persevering. The thing is, you're going to meet some people that maybe you can offer a, a facility to, but they'll say no today. They'll say no tomorrow. They'll so say no the other day, but for us, we quit in the second no. And yet, they follow how start working in the fifth no's and maybe the yes start coming. But you've already quit in the second so we need to persevere through these things. There are days when you go to the field and you'll get some arrogant potential customers who will really knock you confident down if you are not mentally strong. And some of you start saying, ah, this sales thing is not for me. I'm not a salesperson. I think I should just get a desk job. I should be a teller. I think I'll do better as a teller. No, you won't. The thing is, the best job that all of you have is a sales job. You know why? Because the sales job exposes you in front of a stranger that you must convince to trust you. And there is nothing better than that. That you use your brains, you use what you say, you use your heart, you use your physicality, you use your intellectualism to get someone to trust you.
someone who has never met you before. Trust you with their money to put in the bank. Or trust you that you're going to give them a loan facility and you will not take their property away. So improve on yourself. Improve on your perseverance level. Be, be, be persevering. If there is anything that has been the testimony of who I am, is I have persevered through a lot. And I still keep going. You have to persevere. Some of us are cowards. One, two trials are, ah, this shit doesn't work. Let me run. You also have to be very hard working. The aspect of hard work is also issues of identity. We have talked a lot about hard work earlier. I'm not going to emphasize much about it. But you have to be hard working. You have to bulldoze your way to facilities, bulldoze your way to many accounts opening, bulldoze your way. You have to work hard. You have to work hard even when you don't like it. And that's just sales. And you have to enjoy yourself. But again, the matter of identity is also happiness. That you need to be what? Happy. If you're not happy, nobody wanna be around you. Go to meet a, a client with a smile. First put on a smile on her face. The trouble. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's now I hate your smile, not the drug you, you go with a smile. You go with enthusiasm. You go with charisma. You go with this feel good factor. Wherever you go, people should feel your positive energy. Because that's what attracts them. But when you're so negative, you're so sentimental, you're so anxious, I feel it even before you say it. Some of us, we are so scared, we will keep talking. <laughs> when somebody says, oh, he will take you <laughs> and, and you run for your dear life. <laughs> 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 oh, you're going, okay, what will they do? But then you will say, no, really. you, you give yourself negative self talks First, be happy. When you're happy, you don't give yourself negative self talk The thing is, I'm one of the happiest people that exist on earth. But I have every reason not to be happy. I could be blaming my father for all I care. I can be bl blaming Kony Rebels for all I care. I can be blaming so and so for all I care. But hey, I chose not to. To be there. It's a choice. I choose to be happy. Some of my friends used to call me the smiling machine. Because I just smile. And then I have this killer actually smile when I smile. Oh, my <laughs> yeah, it's a serious gap on my teeth as well. A killer, killer smile. Uh, a killer gap, yes. You like it, right? <laughs> what other things that defines our identity, brother? Which other things are important here? Self drive. You have to be self-driven. You have to be so self-driven. Listen, this is your personal uh, business. You are in the you incorporated. This is your personal business. You are not having unemployment. When you start taking a sales job as an employment that guarantees you an assured salary at the end of the month, then you're not going to hit your target. I know there's some margin they give you in bonuses, right? Mm -hmm. For hitting targets, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the, way, that's the money you should be pushing for. That is the money that should be buying you the plots of land across the country. That is the money that should be building for you all the rentals and all the, 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 the cottages in national parks. That's the money that should buy you the Mercedes Benz. Damn, I think you will look great in the Mercedes Benz. Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For Martin. G410. Yeah. Yeah. And you write your name. What, what did you say? Chimwe. This is Chimwe. When you close the door, it, call, it, it, it goes rich. Yeah. Yeah. Self drive. Be so driven. Oh, Antonio, I am driven. Man, I am driven. You must be. My brother was saying, but I, I think I've wasted a lot of my, my life. No, you haven't. 
just be driven. Define the purpose and go hard. And when I say go hard, I mean, man, tear the place apart. When you go downtown, shop to shop to shop to shop, all of them must open an account with you. What about? Henry. Henry. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I'm talking about, Henry. That's the self-drive that I need. When you go to Mukono, you don't leave any door untouched. You go everywhere. That is the drive. The truth is, if you visit everybody in Mukono, you will get about 10 or 15 accounts. You will. But you know the problem is, we are not driven enough to do it. You'll go to 3, 4, and they all say, no, I said, ah, ah, Mukono is a very terrible place. Let <laughs> <laughs> uh, me go somewhere. Huh? Yeah, Mukono doesn't work. <laughs> Mukono works, you're not working, Andrew. But that self-drive must also have what I call mental strength. Be mentally so resilient. Be mentally strong. Be mentally strong to know that you will get some no's and it is okay. In my office, we, we, we get a lot of no's, but we get quite a lot of yeses as well. I know some of the places we've got a lot of no's from, they call us later to give us referrals because we just don't know how to quit. No, we don't. I've turned so simple, turned young people, but my goodness, this, these folks, they work. I call them myself as warriors. And we push, we push hard. And we are mentally strong. We get a lot of no's. I tell them, keep getting more no's. The more no's you get, the more chances you'll get to get a yes. When they say no, you say next. So let's try it. No. Next. Come on, say like you mean it. No. Next. next. No. Next. And you keep going like that. And that's what gives you the drive and the momentum. But when somebody says no to a certain facility, it doesn't mean that the next should be another person. The next should be, could be another product for that one person. Maybe you pitch something that they didn't want at the time, possibly they want something else. No! Yes. 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 No! Yes. Yes. You have to have the next mentality. But if the next is, ah, uh, uh, let me go home, or well, let me go and report to Emma that ah, I, I work in all these places and the feedback is, let me try next week, the feedback is that you go next week, the feedback is that they are going to call me, then, you know, that, that is not going to work. Be mentally strong. Because the truth is, you'll get those rejections. Whether you like it or not, you'll get them. But you know what you should do? Enjoy them. Enjoy them. Enjoy the next thing. Just, just enjoy it. When they say no, just, just enjoy it. And tell yourself next. And when you say next, you have to mean that next. The thing is stretch. From 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., it is critical sales activity, prospecting massively. You can come and do the paperwork from 5 to 7, and then you go home. But for you, you need to go home, because you know you have to go and take care of the kids. And Mr. Chimoli. <laughs> but again, you can tell them, you know what, I'll come on with it late today. The thing is, during the critical sales activity, we are going to talk about critical sales activities tomorrow. But the thing is, during 8 to 5, you must be in front of a potential client, not in the office, trying to do paperwork. I don't want to be in office to do paperwork between 8 to 5. Between 8 to 5, you must be in front of somebody who can buy. From five onwards, take it, stretch, guys, stretch. The, the word is stretch. But at five, oh, time is over. Let me go now. It is now my time. We sales people don't have that. We sales warriors, we work. We work. And we enjoy it. But we have to work with accountability. When you're going home late and you know there's somebody you have to be accountable to, give them a call. I'll tell them I'll come late. But Dr. Daniel said I should work. So if for all I care, you do what you want to do now. I'm a sales warrior and I don't want to wreck your marriage, my friend. Mental strength. What else? Confidence. 
I mean, you have to be resolutely confident. Confidence is key. That is a matter of identity. Or when you go out to a potential client with such level of confidence, oh, you don't know. You just don't know. A lot of things happen when you're confident. Too many things. Too many good things happen to you when you're confident. Too many things. Let me tell you something. These guys who go for Olympics, the one who win the gold, they don't win because they're the most talented, no, because, but because they're the most confident. Especially those gymnastic things they do. I mean, it's confidence that makes you turn around in the hell. Like but again, you're also in the gymnastics of service. Be confident. For every person you're going to meet to talk to, we have to believe that this is a deal. I, I have the closing ratio. For every two phone calls I make, I get an appointment. This is me now. For every two phone calls I make, I get an appointment. For every three meetings I go for, I get a deal. And this deal is not less than a million shillings. So I know if I want to make a hundred million this month, I know what I need to do. So you should also start weighing yourself, know your ratios, that how many phone calls must I make before I get what? An appointment. And how many appointments must I go for before I get a deal or a facility done? You should be weighing your level of work. But that can only happen when you are confident enough. You have to be confident. And the truth is, we have talked about confidence quite a lot of times. 